Hi, to explore uniform integrability, I will start with a little analytic lemma first. I will call this lemma 1, and it says the following, let x be a random variable in L1, so it has a finite absolute moment, then for every positive epsilon, there exists a positive delta, such that such that for any event f with probability less than delta so of course I have a probability space in the background for any event f with uh, probability smaller than delta we have that the expectation of x on that set is less than epsilon. Okay, that's the lemma. It somehow generalizes the green stuff we talked about in a previous video. Uh, so here we have the expectation of x to the p uh, on a small probability set, x larger than c, and I can replace this to any f which has small enough pro sorry, probability. That's what this lemma says. Okay, that's the statement of this lemma. Let's prove this. So I'm going to prove by contradiction. By contradiction. What is the con well, how 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 can I prove something by contradiction here? So I'm going to take an epsilon. I'm going to take a sequence of f's that goes to zero. In other words, it goes below any delta you might imagine. Okay, because the probability will go to zero. So I'm going to take a sequence of s with the probability of which will eventually get below any delta you can imagine. And I'm going to assume that this doesn't hold. Okay, so that's, that's my starting point. By contradiction, I'm going to assume that I satisfy all of this. So I'm going to assume that there is a positive epsilon somewhere. And I'm going to assume that there is a sequence of fn's um, such that the probability of these fn's is less than 2 to the minus n and yet, so the probabilities are less than any delta and yet we don't have this, okay, for each of them and yet, and yet expectation of xn under fn is not smaller than this epsilon naught. So that's the contradiction by assuming that the statement is not true, okay? Assuming that this is not true, meaning that there is some epsilon and there is a sequence of fn's which, of which the probability goes to zero, two to the minus n goes to zero, so eventually it gets below any delta you can assume here. And yet this still doesn't happen, okay? So that's just saying that the lemma is not true. Assume that the lemma is not true. Assume that. Then, I'm going to define age as the lim sup of these events, Fn, or if you want, the intersection union Fk, k is at least n, and goes from 1 to infinity in the intersection. Okay, the lim sup of the Fn's. Um, Borea Cantelli 1 tells me that this has probability 0. Borea Cantelli 1 tells me that the probability of this slim soup is 0. What did Borea Cantelli 1 need? Borea Cantelli 1 only needed that the probabilities of the Fn's is summable. So probability of the Fn's, if I sum this, is finite, which is of course true because 2 to the minus n is summable. So Borel counter is one applies, and it tells me that the probability of the limb soup is zero. So this event is uh, zero probability. And now what I want to do is calculate the expectation of x on this event h. Okay? which is the expectation of x times the indicator 
of the limb soup of the F ends. Now, homework to check for you is that the indicator of the limb soup is the limb soup of the indicators. And so we're going to have the limb soup of the indicators of the F ends. And it doesn't make any difference if I multiply this with a number, a random number that doesn't depend on n. It's a positive random number that doesn't depend on n. So again, I did two things here. The uh, indicator of the limb soup is the limb soup of the indicators. That's something for you to check at home. And I multiply with a number that doesn't depend on n. This doesn't change anything with the limb soup. Okay, the other thing for you to check at home is that if I look at expectations of limb soups versus limb soups of expectation, then I can do kind of a reversed Fatus lemma. Fatus lemma world with limb ins. And for limb ins, expectation of the limb inf would be smaller than or equal than limb inf of the expectation. Check that a reversed Fatus lemma apply here, and that works for limb soups, except the inequality is the other way around. So that's again something I'm not going to do here. You check it at home and then you can just pull the limb soup out of the expectation with the price of an inequality. Okay, now the contradiction, the indirect assumption was that all of these people is at least epsilon naught. So the limb soup is also at least epsilon naught. So assuming that the lemma doesn't hold, we arrive to the expectation of x on this event age is at least epsilon naught. However, that's a contradiction because the event is zero probability. So that's a contradiction because if I have a zero probability event and I have this uh, x which is in L1, then the indicator of the zero probability even times uh, mod x should have zero probability just because the indicator is zero almost everywhere multiplied with x is still zero almost everywhere expectation uh, must be then zero so this thing cannot be larger than epsilon naught it has to be zero by the assumption we made so that's a contradiction so we assume the lemma doesn't hold we reach the contradiction which means the lemma must hold so that's the end of this proof okay I want to just show you a little application of this lemma which I'm going to call lemma 2 and that's actually something we already saw that's something we already saw so I'm going to put here lemma 2 lemma 2 says that if x is in L1 and epsilon is positive then there exists a k such that expectation of x expectation of x on the set well x mod on the set x mod is larger than k is smaller than epsilon and essentially is the same statement as the one we saw before that namely these kind of things go to zero with c it's essentially the same thing here. If I fix an epsilon, I can pick a large enough k so that this thing is more than epsilon. I don't have the piece power here, but essentially it's the same thing. Okay, let me just show you. So why did I bring this up? Because I just want to show you how it comes from lemma one. So if I want to prove this, if I want to prove this using lemma one, then what I can do is fix epsilon. So for this epsilon, take delta from lemma 1 for this random variable x and this epsilon take delta from lemma 1 so here is lemma 1 again I have x I have epsilon then I can pick delta such that this is true okay and then once I took delta then for this delta I can pick k large enough such that such that 
the probability of x larger than k is smaller than delta. Probability that x larger than k is smaller than delta. Why can I do that? Well, I can do that for every random variable, but actually for a random variable with mean 1, it's quite easy to see how to do that because the probability that x is larger than k is by Markov's inequality is bounded by the expectation of mod x over k. I assume k is positive here, of course. And so just fixing the expectation of mod x, which is fixed because x is fixed, the distribution x is fixed, uh, I can just pick k large enough to make this smaller than delta. And then all, you, all I need to do is to apply lemma 1 with this f. Okay, so this is going to be the event f. This event here is going to be the event f. And if I now look at the statement of lemma 1, which is still here, the expectation of mod x under this event is exactly what I'm looking at here. And so the lemma exactly tells me that it's smaller than epsilon. So this short uh, second piece, lemma 2 if you want, is just repeating what we had before and just claiming that proving lemma 1 actually provides lemma 2 without uh, referring to monotone convergence, which we did before.